After what was without a doubt the craziest trade season in Toronto Raptors history, the deadline has passed and Bruce Brown is still a Toronto Raptor. In this video, we're going to break down the real reason as to why he remained a Toronto Raptor despite all the reports and all the rumors indicating he was going to be dealt. Additionally, the newly acquired Spencer Dinwiddie has been cut by the Toronto Raptors, and that's another move that has Raptors fans kind of perplexed right now in terms of what's actually going on. So we have a lot of things to discuss in this video, but before we do, again, over 56% of our viewers are not subscribed to the channel, and we have a lot of content to sort of break down a lot of these new players, to break down in future vids, a lot of a weird second half of the season coming up for the Toronto Raptors. So if you want to stay up to date with everything regarding this team, definitely hit that subscribe button. But let's dive into what's going on right now because firstly a lot of people wanted Bruce Brown gone but I do have to say there's only one word to describe what Masai Ujiri did this season whether you, if you agree with his moves or not the only way to put it someone cooked here Masai Ujiri definitely cooked for the Toronto Raptors he made four big trades kind of shocking trades kind of out of nowhere moves and you know, this team definitely looks a lot different than where it was specifically a month ago. Today, we traded away Kelly, uh, traded away. We acquired Kelly Olynyk as well as a uh, uh, Abaji from the Utah Jazz, dealing away a first round pick, Otto Porter Jr. as well as Kara Lewis Jr. And then we trade away Dennis Schroeder and Thaddeus Young to acquire Spencer Dinwiddie, who we eventually waived. But the thing that people is mo are most fired up about is. The little Woj bomb that came at the end of this trade deadline. I saw his name. I got all excited. And then it said the Toronto Raptors are keeping Bruce Brown. Sources have told ESPN. Despite all the rumors, despite all the reports, Woj went on to say that the $23 million team option on Bruce Brown for the 2024-2025 contract gives him the Toronto Raptors a lot of options this offseason. Now, if you want the real reason as to why the Toronto Raptors kept Bruce Brown, there you go. The options, the flexibility, the things that are going on. It's not just that. Josh Lundberg also brought, broke down that uh, basically... The Raptors, he said this earlier, the Bruce Brown remains the most likely player to be moved, but a couple factors are complicating talks. The Raptors aren't inclined to add another pick for the 2024 draft. That makes sense. But the second part of this builds into the real reason Bruce Brown ended up staying. And they've been reluctant to take on long-term money. Bruce Brown is making close to $20 million per year. In order to bring back sort of actual assets, you know, in a potential Bruce Brown trade, you're going to have to get some salary matching. You're going to have to sort of make the other team has to sort of match salary in order to stay under the cap and make this trade actually work under NBA rules. So the issue Masai Ujiri had for this trade deadline, because given all the reports, everything that came out, he definitely seemed to try to deal away Bruce Brown, but they couldn't get a deal done that didn't bring back future money. And every single move the Toronto Raptors did today was done to maintain flexibility for the future. Masai Ujiri wants a blank canvas. He wants to be able to cook, right? What he did this this season, right? He wants to be Someone able to, to cook up like Walter White here for the future of this Toronto Raptors team. We acquired Kelly Olynyk, who's a free agent this summer. We have Bruce Brown, who there's a team option on. You can bring him back. You can trade him at the deadline. You can do whatever. Gary Trent Jr., free agent. Didn't get dealt. Didn't get dealt away. Dennis Schroeder had a two-year contract. We dealt him away for literally nothing. We traded away Dennis Schroeder, as the report sort of revealed, the Toronto Raptors to avoid a $1.5 million upcoming contract bonus for games played. The Raptors are planning to waive Spencer Dinwiddie. So we acquired Spencer Dinwiddie, who is a good basketball player, not tremendous or anything by any means, you know, an elite PG, but we are waiving him to maintain as much flexibility as possible. We gave away Shooter in order to open up our cap space, open up our flexibility for the future. It's why we trade away Pascal Siakam, and even though I still, especially with how the trade deadline played out, I don't know if that's the right move to even more of a greater extent, but Masai Ujiri wants flexibility this summer. Why is that? Why does he want to? Does he see free agents? I mean, Siakam and OG are both free agents this summer. Is he going to bring them back? You know, how do the rules work on that? I don't know. I've seen a lot of conspiracies on that. But this is, maybe he has a plan. 
maybe he has a vision. Obviously, you're going to have to pay, uh, they're going to have to pay Emmanuel quickly, who's a restricted free agent this summer. Seems like the Toronto Raptors want to bring back Kelly Olynyk, so his contract is going to be there. Gary Trent Jr. is a free agent. Do we want to bring him back? I mean, he's shooting 43% behind the three-point line. So the Raptors now have options, and there's a lot of speculation, and it's been like that for a while, but there, with this flexibility comes a lot of speculation from Toronto Raptors fans in terms of what they're going to do for the future. But they didn't deal away Bruce Brown because likely the offers for a first-round pick meant bringing back a bad contract for the future. And basically what this indicates to me, the Toronto Raptors are not trying to be bad for very long. Now, for this season, I'm confused. Everyone's been calling for the tank. Everyone's been asking for this tank to potentially happen and everything along those lines. But I'm a bit confused as to what's going on with this. Because we acquired Kelly Olenek who is going to help this team significantly. There, there's a huge plus in this group adding Kelly Olenek. We keep Bruce Brown, who without all the trade reports and speculation going on in his head, he's going to play better for this team. The Raptors have their top, their pick this season. It's protected for the first, for the top six picks. You are taking a major gamble right now if you didn't bottom out the way the Toronto Raptors fans sort of expected this season. So, we dealt away another first to acquire Kelly Olenek, who, again, we could have gotten a free agency, but I think that's more to bring in a Baji. But we'll talk about him. We'll break him down in a future video. But if we don't get that draft pick for this season, you know, if that doesn't hit for us in the lottery, and one thing I was thinking today, too, just looking at it, we all know how the San Antonio Spurs just magically get a lot of lottery luck. Right, so the the fans, the NBA loves adjusting that lottery luck to, so the Raptors would definitely have their. I could see their pick easily falling to seven with that Spurs lottery luck. We don't get that pick. We trade away another one this year. That means we only have the Pacers as well as the Detroit Pistons second. We don't have a lot of draft capital for this season. Again, we have our future first round picks there. I don't know how this rebuild's going to look. I don't know how this rebuild's going to... We're going to retool the roster, how we're going to attract free agents in the future. I mean, I really like our young core group of quickly R.J. Barrett and Scotty Barnes, especially R.J. Barrett, the development he's shown since really coming to Toronto. He looks like the Raptors' best player now at this point. I really like the fit of Kelly Olynyk on this Toronto Raptors team to be a big man that spaces the floor. He's mobile, even though he's kind of a, you know, he's an older guy, 32 years old. I think in the near term future, he can actually be a valuable piece to this Toronto Raptors team. But we didn't choose. We didn't choose the direction. We tank and we push him for the plan. We haven't made that decision just yet. So. We'll see how it all shakes out for the Toronto Raptors team. But Masai Ujiri, he got what he asked for, I guess. It wasn't the first-round pick, but it was flexibility for the future. And Blake Murphy kind of put it, Brown deals can be revisited on draft night and in July if they execute the team option. So he should still have a market. But I'm surprised they didn't find a landing spot now. I'm shocked. I'm surprised. Again, the individual trades the Toronto Raptors made, I'm not mad at. Schroeder, again, didn't seem a part of the long-term vision for the Toronto Raptors. We didn't bring up any bad contracts. We didn't deal away any first-round picks to the San Antonio Spurs, so that's awesome. But a lot's on this offseason now at this point to quickly turn around this rebuild. But let me know what you guys think about all this Toronto Raptors news. You guys are the best to make this far. Subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. Anyways, I'm signing up. Cheers.